We're going to go to Amanda real quick because she's telling us to wrap it up and let's yell at her. Why do you want us to wrap it up? Because I'm getting a little voice in my ear that's telling me to wrap it up. Before that we do, cat? we're going to introduce something. We'll come back with this uh, fas fascinating Wrigley Field talk. But we have someone here. Or Comiskey. We have Harry Carey here. Oh, Harry! Hello again, everybody. And with us, uh, ooh, it's the lovely Bridget and Tony. <laughs> Cubs are leading now. It's tied, two to two. How about Terry Woods last night? Terry hey. Woods. Hey, hey, can you say Bridget's name backwards? Bridget backwards. Tabaragalagaboot. Ta <laughs> <laughs> now, don't be a smart guy and ask me how to spell it, because I've had med too many cold beverages tonight. Hey, Harry, we're going to go over to your restaurant. And, uh, hey! You're looking good, hey. by the way. Yeah, you look great. Uh, we Thank sent you, our, sweetie. one of our yeah. correspondents, Bridget Houlihan, down to the Harry Care restaurant to check out what they have to offer, I guess. So yes. let's roll that. Hey everybody, it's Bridge uh, from New Hippo, your Chicago show, as you know, and we are here at the legendary Harry Carey's restaurant. And with me um, this this nice evening, um, Carrie Check, director of operations. Tell us a little bit of history about this building. This building is very historical. It yes, is, indeed. It was built in 1895, and it was originally the Chicago Varnish Company. Mm -hmm. And they built it directly on the river so that they'd be close to the river so they could transport their product. Okay. So um, we achieved landmark status in 2001 so that it will be preserved and uh, nothing will happen to it. Okay. And when did it become Harry Carey's Restaurant? It became Harry Carey's Restaurant in 1987. Um, and we've been here now for a little over 15 years. And here we have, we're actually standing right in front of the, what, is this the first picture of the? This is definitely one of the first pictures of the building. As you can see, it was in the, the uh, early 1900s. We don't even have uh, paved streets, obviously, prior to vehicles. We've is got horses. This, this is Kinsey. Yeah. Kinsey. Mm -hmm. and yeah, this is Dearborn. Yeah. Dear. And oh, all right. <laughs> Okay, why don't you tell us a little bit about the, the first thing that you see when you walk in, of course, is um, the statue of Harry's head. Sure. Why don't you tell us a little bit about This bus was done by Lou Sella, and it's a replica of the one that's sitting right out in front of Wrigley Field that was just recently placed there in memory of Harry. So we've got the, the bust, so you can see it first thing when you come in, so everybody remembers Harry. And over here in um, one of the glass cases, of course, are Harry's famous glasses. These are his glasses. Those are the last ones, the famous ones. They're the epitome of Harry Carey. Absolutely. Now, and what else is here in this um, glass case? I see some microphones, baseballs. We've got a couple of uh, autographed baseballs. This is uh, Carlton Fisk, and it was the first ball that he signed as a Hall of Famer. Then we also have one by uh, Carey Wood, and this was he used during his uh, record, record setting 20 strikeout game. Um, these are some of the uh, radio stations that Harry worked with during the uh, time that he was with us, and then some of our uh, some of our fans and regular guests, and some of the news stations that they work for, and they've autographed the uh, microphone. Uh, Great. Okay, Carrie, can you give us a little bit of an idea of Harry Carey as a person? Um, I know he has all these legions of fans, and obviously to this day, even after his passing, that people are still so into Harry Carey. Tell us a little bit about him from your own experience. Well, I think that people really, really loved him because he was very much into his fans and he just really loved them. He would come into the restaurant maybe, uh, gosh, four to five, sometimes six nights a week and he would sit down and have dinner. He'd usually start in the bar with a drink or two with everybody just surrounding him. Oh, Harry and Harry, we love you and Harry and Harry and signed autographs and took pictures and the only time he just didn't want anyone to come up to him was while he was right in the middle of eating his entree. People could just wait in a line and as soon as he was finished eating, they just came right up and he took picture after picture. He walked around through the dining room, he shook hands, he talked to people. Night after night after night with sincerity, with excitement. I mean, he just really was into the fact that he was only famous and he was only here because of his fans. If it wasn't for them, he wouldn't be anything. And I think that's really, really rare quality in, uh, in you know, a sports figure like that. So the place is just magical. When he walked into the place, there was just a hush and a buzz. And there was you could just hear people whispering, Harry's here, Harry's here, Harry's here. And it went all through the restaurant. It was really exciting. And do you have a favorite Harry story? Well, I know that I like to, uh, Dutchie tells the best stories about Harry, of course, but uh, I know that one of the stories that she told that I just find hysterical is he didn't really know a whole lot about cooking because he never had to cook for himself because he always ate out at restaurants because it was one of his favorite things to do. So anytime she went away and he had to do anything to kind of fend for himself at the house, it was it was actually quite comical. So she uh, said that he called her one time when she was with her family, I think back in St. Louis, and said, well, I don't know where the garbage bags are. I need another garbage bag. So she said, well, Harry, they're in the cabinet below under the thing, and you just need to grab one out of there. So he went. 
apparently got one. Well, he calls back five minutes later and says, well, I found the garbage bags, Dutchie, but they only have one side. He didn't know to open it up because he'd never had to open up a garbage bag in his life. She said she was tempted to tell, to call him back and say, you know, just use duct tape, Harry, and duct tape three of them, four of them together. So it sounds like something my dad would do. Yeah. I hate, hate to say it. I think uh, uh, definitely not used to being in the kitchen. Oh yeah. Oh well, great. great. Well, because he had a restaurant to come to every night. Yeah. To hey, I wouldn't come. Yeah. I wouldn't take out the garbage, please. <laughs> uh, well, I'd like to thank you, Carrie, for taking time to talk to us about Harry Carey and the wonderful restaurant that we have here. What's the address again? 33 West Kinsey. And when are you guys open? We are, oh, we're open all the time. Lunch and dinner, seven days a week. Great, great. Well, thank you. And if you guys stay tuned uh, for a little bit more Nude Hippo, you'll see what's coming up next. Hey, welcome back to Nude Hippo, your Chicago show. I am Tony Los Angeles alongside... Hi, uh, Bridget. There you go. Yeah, you need a cue card or something. Um, you know, Why I don't you tell everybody what you said off camera? I can't. Uh, you know, I grew up at Wrigley Field, right? Yes, you, you know I, I, I have heard many that. family members that have worked at Wrigley Field yes. over the years, including my own dear old mom. Yes, dear yeah. old mom. And so, you know, she was too cheap to have a babysitter, so she just let us wander around Wrigley Field. And we, I'm not a sports fan, but my sister is. And, uh, we used to um, collect baseballs. Uh, we used to get the baseballs, the Major League Baseballs, yeah. and collect signatures from every single ball player. And sure. Now, don't bug me about the balls. They're gone. Absolutely. Every single one except one. But besides that, we got bored after a while collecting them because we, we'd see the Cubs every single day. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Ryan Sandberg, big deal. Oh. So um, we start wandering the park, and, and, and we ran into this guy, and we would walk with him every day. And I, I realized who he was. It was Harry Carey. We got to walk and talk oh. and walk him out every day. And, 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 but as a child, I didn't realize the significance of, 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 of Harry Carey. I sure. knew he was on TV, just like you know I'm on TV. And when you meet me, you're going to think, no big deal. But years from now, you're going to go, you oh my walk God. Can you walk with you? Absol absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> you can walk with me anytime. Um, so I just wanted to mention that I had a, because you just did that Harry Carey piece. That, that was, that was cute. a cute piece. Yeah. 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 And then, he, uh, yeah. I'm, again, I'm not a sports fan, you know. Which and is interesting. So, yeah, I, yeah, Bears game first time last year. I was hey on now. the 50-yard line. Hey, not Meant bad nothing for to your me. first Bears game. I had game. no idea where I was, you know. It's then we good. did that Bears taping thing down in Champaign. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, Chris Haskell, who's my wonderful camera guy, I take him wherever I go. Um, and really? uh, they actually, uh, they turned to him and went, Chris, uh, we, have, we have a problem. This is NBC. We have a problem, Chris. I'm like, oh, Chris, this is your big chance. We're going to call you in. You're being called in the big leagues now. They're like, we need your camera. Oh. They actually wanted to use our camera for the broadcast. NBC5? Yeah. Uh -huh, no uh -huh. way. Yeah, absolutely. No joke. Uh -huh. 